Okay. So thank you very much for joining me tonight. This is uh, the first voluntary session for EDU 556 Technology for Instruction and Management. So my name is uh, Ryan Schaff. I'm Associate Professor of Educational Technology in the School of Education. I've been teaching at Notre Dame uh, since 2010, so I've been here a while. Um, I also teach as an adjunct at Johns Hopkins. I've been teaching there since 2007. And before that, I was a K through five teacher um, in uh, Howard County. I used to teach third grade and technology. So big, big surprise. I was a technology teacher back then. Um, so this course really does uh, serve many of the different programs at Notre Dame. So, um, you know, you'll it's 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 very, you know, it's not uncommon to have folks that are getting their, um, you know, masters in education, uh, masters in library media, uh, TESOL, T, um, you know, people getting their masters in TESOL. Um, and there's a many different um, programs. This is the core type of technology course that really takes care and we really look at the ISTE standards, which you should be coming familiar with and if you're starting to study module one. Uh, it really helps to show um, educators how to use and leverage technology inside of classrooms and also for their own learning and for professional development through the rest of their careers. Um, so uh, this is a 100% online course. It's typically asynchronous, meaning that uh, the reason I'm doing these voluntary sessions, is it uh, really does kind of help to calibrate people and kind of get them to understand if sometimes even if they want to put a face like mine to the course, it's usually helpful. Um, and also, if you have some questions, you can get them answered by me instead of just through uh, email. Um, I'll probably have two more of these sessions throughout the rest of the eight weeks together. They really do kind of um, fly through these uh, courses, but that's good because it means you get you'll graduate sooner. So I am going to start sharing my screen to walk you through. I'll, I'll briefly walk you through the syllabus. I'll walk you through Brightspace. I'll walk you through Anthology, which is the portfolio, and then answer any questions you might have between each of the sections. So I don't have a slide deck because, well, the entire Brightspace website is my slide deck. It's everything is in there for you to um, uh, for you to access. So let me hit the share screen here. OK, so I'm sharing my screen. And as you can see, I've gone into Brightspace. So I've logged in um, and I clicked on this course. Hopefully you all have been able to access Brightspace and get in. Uh, when you get in, you see that it's kind of like in this tile type of format. You can see, well, right now you probably only see three of these tiles. I have many more tiles that are invisible to you now, but they'll open up as you get going in the course. Uh, you can also see that I have course announcements here. You probably see that there's a menu up here as well. Um, if you are interested in ever finding what your grades are for the course, you may go to tools and hit grades. Um, I'm not doing it because of FERPA, but you can click on here and access your grades, take a look at the grade books, see what my feedback is. Um, I keep grades both in Brightspace, but you also get assignment feedback inside of Anthology. So it's you're going to get feedback, just uh, it depends where. Uh, so it's either going to be Brightspace. I keep a full grade book inside of Brightspace, so you'll see all your scores being generated in there but you also get immediate feedback for your assignments, either in Brightspace or Anthology, depending on what assignment it is, okay? So that's how you, tools to go to grades to get your assignments, okay? Now, the easiest way I find to experience Brightspace is once you enter the course, uh, you go, the course page, you click on content. The reason being is it makes it almost into a table of contents to where you can see and kind of go in a sequential order down so um, I mentioned before what Anthology. So Anthology is our assessment platform. Uh, the School of Education uses it for all its major assessments. Uh, you might say, oh, well, you know, why do we have Brightspace? Well, you'll end up discovering that Anthology is not really meant to be for learning. It's more meant for assessment. It's also, um, it, we also keep it because it's extremely secured as in students' data, um, you know, it's 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 it deals with uh, 
like advanced um, encryption. So it really protects the data um, and it also protects us as well. So this way um, hackers won't come and, and just, um, destroy all of our data. We've been using um, anthology portfolio. It used to be called Chalk and Wire. Uh, we've been using it for since I think 2006. So we've been using it for quite a bit of time and uh, it's really helped us. We just were accredited again through CAPE, which is our um, is a, is a council for accreditation for education providers uh, or education preparation. Um, it's not easy to get the uh, accreditation, um, and we ended up doing it very successfully. We have um, Anthology to thank a lot for it because it's our data warehouse. We're able to get a lot of reports. And what that means for you as a student is that you'll use this service to upload assignments and also then get them assessed by your professors. Um, I will show you which assignments go into Anthology and which ones will go into Brightspace. Because I, I understand that sometimes it's a little confusing going, well, where do I turn this in? Where do I put this at? I made sure the, to uh, fashion the syllabus to where I tell you exactly where to put things and on what date. So, and also inside of Anthology even tells you where and also includes dates. So uh, if you've never used Anthology, if you haven't purchased it yet, please do so at this time, make sure to go um, uh, take a look at my announcements. I gave you the secured link to where you could um, access and pay for it. Professor Ball will reach out to you with an email. She provides you with a subscription code that allows you to access Anthology. If you've had Anthology from previous courses, you don't have to buy another account. That account will last you for five years. It's good. It's all I do ask you to do is just make sure that you can log in. Um, uh, if you've forgotten your password or whatever, um, you can reach out to me or you can reach out to Professor uh, Madeline Ball and we can um, we can uh, reset your password for you. So if you need a little bit of a refresher or if you need to create your course for the first, I'm sorry, your anthology portfolio for the first time, you can go here. I've created written instructions. I've also done, if you like video and you want a video, I created a 10 minute tutorial that walks you through from you have a, an account for the very first time it walks you through for creating your portfolios and how to submit your assignments you know every button to click uh every feature that i can think of that would be important to you it walks you through it in 10 minutes and you can watch it as many times as you need so those resources are there for you the welcome block is the top block right here this actually has information about um the textbooks there's two of them I made sure to get ones that were um, affordable. Uh, I don't want my students spending a, a lot of money on books, but I do feel like there's such a wide variety of technology when it comes to, there's a lot of philosophies, there's a lot of technology. Sometimes it's really helpful to have a structure. So what I did was I provided you with two books. One is the Francom one, which is, he's been revising it in the background. So I think there it says 2019, but I think you'll have a version that's like 2022. Um, so if you have, I don't even think he has an older version out there anymore, but um, that link should still um, give you access to get the um, get the text. Jennifer uh, Gonzalez, she uh, is the creator of Call of Pedagogy. It's a very popular um, education themed website. She produces a wonderful teacher's guide to tech every single year. So she updates. Um, it comes with hundreds and hundreds of different digital tools to use in the classroom. The reason I like these tools is they uh, both of them, you know, two books. Oh, my goodness. It could spend, you could spend $200 on them. No, uh, one book is, I think, $39. The other one's like $25. Uh, I know that Jennifer Gonzalez just released a 2023 version. I don't care which version you get. You can get the 2022 one or the 2023 one. It's not a big deal with me. So you can get either uh, variety. I think her book costs about 20 or $25. So again, fairly affordable when it comes to the book. So please make sure you get them. There are readings and I sh will show you in the syllabus where to find them. Uh, so let me just get back. I'll give you a, a chance to ask some questions in just a minute. I want to get to the syllabus and kind of go over that. Okay. 
Okay, here's the syllabus. If you ever need to download a syllabus, um, a copy of the syllabus, you can always go to the welcome section. It's there for you. Um, I also sent it through our announcement, the very first announcement, but I know that people were being added as of this week. So people have been just streaming into the course. Um, there's the course, uh, course date. We started in, on the 23rd. We will end March 18th. So this course goes fast. There's the Brightspace link. There is my email address. It's probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. rshop at ndm.edu. I'll answer it that day, I promise. Uh, there's my phone number. If you have um, some sort of question you'd like to ask, or uh, if you want to make a plan, that's fine. Just please just uh, don't text me at like 1 a.m. <laughs> that's all. Um, and you're not going to get an answer anyway. So obviously. Um, but uh, just there's ways of contacting me, no problem. I won't bore you to death with the course um, information. You can read it yourself, but just understand that it's giving you this. If I had to name this another course, it's basically integrating technology into school classrooms is really probably the best way to answer it. Um, I'm just scrolling through here to get to there. Let's see. There's uh, the course learning objectives. You can read that. Attendance. The nice thing is this is asynchronous. So <laughs> just when it comes to online courses, the way that you won't show good participation is, is really just not participating. If you kind of fall off the map, as in you're not doing your assignments, you're not checking in, you know, if I, I email you or make an appointment, you really don't want to do that. You don't want to fall behind. I understand life happens. I try to manage this course to give you time. I know that you are working professionals. Uh, but please don't disappear. If I email you, which I do have to use the school, I do have to use the Outlook for um, Notre Dame. I have to use that email account. But if you email me, I'll obviously reply to you. Just don't fall off the face of the earth, please. If there's something that's happening, please work with me. Um, I've had every, you know, I've heard, and I'm, I'm not even going to call them excuses. I've heard all these different life scenarios happen, and I understand that they happen. I'm very flexible and understanding. What is not going to benefit you as a student is uh, just kind of like all these things happen and you pretend like you put me on some sort of ivory tower. You don't have to do that. Reach out to me. OK, I'm here. I'm human and I understand. OK, so please reach out to me if you have a question. Reach out to me if something's happening. You don't have to give me the entire amount of detail. I respect your privacy, but I need to know something's happening that's that that may be taking up your time and we can work through it. If not, I can obviously refer you to the advisors and they can then work with you on coming up with a different schedule or something. So the way to really not have attendance inside of an online course that's asynchronous is really just by not just participating and kind of going with the uh, the workflow and the, uh, the timeline. Uh, I do ask that uh, if you're doing the assignments, if you are working with obviously with Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or anything like that, uh, when you uh, send me a submission, like a digital submission, please put name the file with your last name and the assignment name. That way I can kind of know whose work it is. Um, I do track everything. I do kind of keep copies in the background this way. If you have a question about something, I can go back to it. Um, so just please make sure you're naming your files. And I even gave you an example of what it would look like if I was submitting some work. Okay, the assignments. So these are the, uh, there's two types of uh, assignments in this course. There's assignments and there's activities. The assignments are the big projects. They're the really big ones. And there's only six of them. OK, there are activities that are smaller in um, point value, um, but they're usually created to really help you prepare for the actual big assignments. Uh, so there's the online discussion, which we are now participating in, which is due, I think, for submission on January 30th. Uh, so, again, there's the prompt. It tells you what to do inside of Brightspace, how to participate. And I can walk through and show you Brightspace in a minute on how to do things and how to, I can even show you how to respond to the discussion. So you'll do this um, now, as you can see, there's some directions in here with the discussion, you're actually gonna put all of the, um, all of your forum entries, you're gonna actually gonna put onto a document to upload to, um, to Anthology Portfolio. 
it's the reason being is once you take this course your discussion forum kind of will you know it'll be off your radar it'll disappear but if you put it up inside of anthology that data is kept there and secured and your assignments are there in, um, for you to access assignment two you're actually going to do a presentation on digital citizenship um so you'll you'll do that there is a peer review process that goes along with that but just stay tuned for that uh, but you'll create a presentation that kind of describes, you know, to, to an audience that will describe how to be safe in some sort of law or policy associated with technology inside of schools. Um, that's, um, that's, and again, that's another anthology portfolio submission, um, but I will show you exactly where the timeline is for doing this. So that's the next big assignment. Another one is called using data to improve student achievement. You're going to take student data and you're going to analyze the data that I give you. And then you're going to um, make informed instructional decision, uh, decisions based on your data analysis. So this way, if you, you're teaching a math class, you see that you might have some students that are weak in an area, you end up coming up with ideas on how to support them and how to potentially improve uh, their instruction. So this way they can be successful. <laughs> You'll get to use Microsoft Excel. You'll get to manipulate that. You'll create the charts. Um, and this way you can then do an analysis and then uh, write up a summary of what you found. You'll end up searching through and finding uh, instructional or digital resources to use for lesson planning. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's like, a, uh, you know, it's almost like a scavenger hunt. You go and find these really cool sites and tools to potentially use for, um, for a class. You'll actually plan for a lesson um, using technology inside of a classroom. So whether you're in a classroom or you're not, you're um, you know deciding to go back into education or whatever, you're going to pick a subject. You're going to plan out instruction, and uh, you're going to. You don't actually have to teach it, but hopefully it's a course that maybe you will teach in the future. But you'll plan it, design it, and get it ready to actually do instruction. And finally, there is a final course assessment. Okay, so before you all have any test anxiety, I'm going to tell you this: uh, you will get a lot of help and a lot of preparation to do and succeed in the uh, assignment, prior the uh, the test. Now, that's obviously going to be at the end. So I give you a breakdown of the assignments and the activities. The assignments; these all go into uh, anthology. Okay. In fact, I even tell you that all the activities you pretty much you'll do, you'll turn into bright space. These are smaller point values, but they're going to help you to prepare for the big assignments. OK, so this uh, course, uh, the score breakdown should help you. Um, but I also have this and that is the course schedule It'll walk you through everything that we're going to do. Obviously, we're in this schedule right here. You'll see the topics that will be covered. What are the readings that you should be doing? And what are the activities or assignments that are due? And I even include the due dates of when, and uh, where, I even tell you where to put them at. And as you can see, there's different modules that are going to go on throughout this entire time. I'm just going to scroll through. I'll let you read it later. But I want to show you this better graphic down here, and that is course assessment due dates. So I tell you when, when things are due, and I also tell you where to put them. So this way, this is going to be kind of like your friendly reminder of what is due and where. I also made sure to put dates so you can kind of do a running record of that. And uh, you can see that I'll probably end up giving you this whole entire week to do the test. Um, but of course, the final assessment will be due the very last day of class. Uh, there is an honor. This is the last thing I'll say about the syllabus. There is an honor code. Please uh, just understand and please read the honor code. And there is, uh, I do request that you put this academic integrity um, statement at the bottom of your assignment. You don't have to sign it with your hand. You can just type your name. Uh, just put it at the bottom of all of your written work. Uh, it's just an affirmation that you understand that, or that you understand that you received no help on the assignment. Let me go ahead and just uh, stop right here. Are there any questions about the, uh, the, uh, the syllabus or any of the assignments? Now, obviously, this was the 30,000 foot view of everything. I'm not going to get into detail because it would be way too much to go over in an hour. 
Um, what I am doing is trying to just um, show you the structure of the course, where to turn things in at, and where to go to find things, which I'll show you in Brightspace in a minute. So I'm going to zip up for a minute and see if I have any questions. Feel free to unmute yourself. If you're uncomfortable with that, you can also um, type. I have a question. Uh huh. Uh, for the uh, data analysis, did I hear you correctly that you'll provide us with the data? Yes. Okay. Sorry, somebody requested. Okay. Just so making sure that people can see transcripts if they need to. Good. They can. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, John, I'll give you access to that uh, to data to work with. Um, I know that people sometimes aren't in schools and they don't have access to that data. Also, student data, you have to be very careful with how to manage that. So what I end up doing is I give you fictitious data. So it's, it's you know, even if you mess with the Excel spreadsheets, okay. It's, uh, they're make-believe they're make -believe students, I promise. Any other questions on the syllabus or any of the assignments? Yes, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, I'm just asking, um, are we going to be uh, copying and uh, pasting this uh, statement, the academic integrity assessment, in all assignments plus discussions? Uh, yeah, that's an easy practice. You can do it right at the bottom of everything, and that's fine. Uh, if you didn't do it on your discussion, that was due. It's not a problem. It's just uh, yeah, it's yeah, just to I show you it. academic integrity. That's all. Oh, thank you. No problem, Rebecca. Do we have the ability to go in and edit and, and add that to it if we already posted it or no? I think so. I think so. Right, I didn't, put, I didn't put a, um, uh, you can also hit reply and just hit reply to your reply. <laughs> and you can just put that and just copy and paste it in. That's fine. Again, I'm not, I'm not the Gestapo. I'm not looking to ruin your academic careers because you forgot to um, copy and paste it. The main thing to know is that there is, you know, I do expect academic integrity in my class, and I don't. I I um, always would feel bad if somebody would come back and say, "Oh no, I didn't know about that." When it's clearly written out in the syllabus and it's part of the uh, student uh, handbook, so I just want you to be aware of that. Okay. Any other questions? I know I had a couple people chime in at the same time. I just hoping I answered everybody's question. All right, so let me move on to Brightspace. So, and I'll also show anthology, I promise too. So if um, I'm hoping everybody's had an opportunity to go into, um, into uh, Brightspace. So here is our course website, okay? So it, uh, it's done by module. So if I click on this, here's the welcome module, here's the, the anthology training module, here's module one, which is what you're working on this week. And as you can see, once I click on it, it basically, everything's over here on the right. All of my modules really start off with a plan. The plan is kind of like a written, um, it's almost like a lesson plan. I write out exactly what to do in all of it. Let me, let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger, sorry. There you go, it's a little bit bigger. I start off with an objective. Um, I, I describe what the lecture, the presentation I have. I create narrated presentations for all of my uh, modules. And uh, let me let me first off apologize for my nasally voice when I narrate, I'm sorry. This is this is the voice that God gave me. It's nasty, I'm sorry. I wish I, wish I could pay, my, my wife has a much better voice. I wish I could pay her to do it, but she won't do it anymore. So I can't even bribe her with a good meal anymore. It's just not gonna work and she, she knows it's a way. <laughs> so I apologize for my terrible voice, I'm sorry. Um, however, you know, it's, <laughs> Uh, I do give you a transcript. If you get a little tired of hearing me, I do give you a transcript. So um, I, there's readings. I tell you exactly what to read for the assignment. You'll see that it'll mention what and what pages, chapters one and two, you'll see. I also list what the activities are and what the assignments are. Okay, so that's the plan. Now, if I want to go back, I can always use the, these are called breadcrumbs. I can always use the breadcrumbs back like Hansel and Gretel, go back. And um, I also then have the presentation. So if you just go right down the list, here is a presentation. I put them all on YouTube. 
Uh, you can hit the view and you can watch it or you can just go right to YouTube and click, I want to watch it on YouTube instead. And you can watch the video. They're usually anywhere from like 10 to 20 minutes long. And it takes you through the entire process of what exactly I'm talking about inside this module. And if I'm going too fast, which I, I talked rather slow uh, in the actual video, but if I'm going too fast, you can always click on the transcript and I actually include the transcript of everything I'm doing. Because I know I have some students that might be uh, might have some disabilities. This might actually, the transcripts may actually help them. And I, I will provide you links and I'll provide you documents and resources. Here's assignment, here's activity number one, where you'll actually do your professional growth plan for the pre-assessment. If you click on it and enter it, you can then do download the documents and then you can obviously answer what you have to for it. After you finish, you can see, you can read the directions, you can fill up the first column when you're done, you can actually turn it into here. Now, it doesn't look like you can do that for me because you have to realize as I'm the instructor, you're the student. So I don't actually have a submission point, but this is where you would go to turn in your work for Brightspace. Let me click on here. If you want to do the discussion board below, uh, you can see that there's the discussion boards here. Here's the discussion board template where after you're done doing all your discussion, you can put it obviously onto a document. And as you can see, I have students that have started completing their first discussion. Uh, if you want to read and reply to somebody, um, if you want to start your own discussion, obviously you'll have to do a discussion. You'll click start a new thread and there you'll enter and you'll put in your answer to my prompt up here. OK, if you want to do replies to other ones, let's say, for instance, here's Shelby's. If I want to do Shelby's, I would click inside of assignment and I can click on, I can read through this and then I can hit reply to thread. This would uh, help me reply to Shelby's posts. Now, uh, see, poor Shelby forgot about her signature too. She got all nervous. Okay, so that's how you do a discussion. Is you just go in here, hit start, type it out. Some people like to do it on a Microsoft Word document first. That's absolutely fine. Um, and then they like to copy and paste it over. Not a problem with that. Okay. Now, the online discussion uh, does ask you to upload it to Anthology. So what you would do is you would take this document right here. So I'm not going to download it, but you would see you can copy and paste all of your participation in. And obviously, you can save it and put it into Anthology. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is this. I'm going to ask, are there any questions about Brightspace? Can I just ask something about this self-evaluation? Yes. I've gone over this like twice. So when when you're saying personal need, is that something where you want us to say that we feel we would need growth and improvement there? Is that what yeah. you're looking for? Okay. Yeah, it's better than it's like, I, it's, I don't like calling it a weakness. It's just an area that you need to grow in. Um, but well, because, uh, so quite honestly, through COVID, I mean, I'm a teacher, so I, I really learned a lot more than I had, but I still consider myself an immigrant, not a native. That's so, fine. you know, I look at some of this and I'm kind of like, okay, I still would see it as a need, even though some of those things I have done collaborating with mm -hmm. teammates, but I don't feel that I would be the leadership part of that. You know what I mean? So there um, I'm looking at myself as a need versus a strength. Yeah. What you could do, if you don't think it's, if it's not a need or a strength, you just leave it blank. So there is actually a direction on there. It says just, if you don't think it's a strength or a professional okay. need, you can just leave it blank. And that's how okay. I read it as it's neither a strength nor a weakness. And I, I again, I don't want to use the word weakness, but it's an no, area. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, I know yeah, exactly. It's yeah. an area that you would consider to be in the middle. What, what the main thing of the exercise is, is that hopefully by the end of the course, you're going to see some growth in some of these categories. Mm -hmm. Okay, because what will happen is, is afterwards, then I'm going to ask you at the end of the course to fill in the post course assessment. Okay, right. so this would, uh, so the poor post course goes into Brightspace. So I'm actually talking, this is the actual discussion. So we've held the discussion, we have to put it up in anthology. So once I'm done, and I'm ready to put up here, I'm going to show you now anthology. So if you haven't gotten a chance to go into anthology yet, I do 
suggest make sure that you go and um, order from uh, Professor Ball if you haven't done so yet. So I've logged in. Here's my dashboard for anthology. Okay. Now you're going to go to menu and you'll go to work and you'll go to my coursework. I have to go a little bit different because I'm an administrator. So let me go to general coursework. All of our assignments are going to be in the general coursework ePortfolio. View. And this is what you'll see when you log in. Just give it a second. It's got to come. It's got to kind of load. Running Zoom sometimes takes up a lot of bandwidth. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down to EDU 556. And you'll see there's a lot of assignments right here. Uh, you don't have to worry about anything for ANS. And this one's kind of been retired. So here is your assignments. Here's where I would turn in my online discussion. I would click on here. I would upload my assignment. And when I'm done with that, then I would send it to me. And I actually would type my name in here. I would type in Ryan Schaff, and then you would send it to me to grade it. I do have some students that have already sent me their online discussion uh, forms. Uh, the next assignment you have to do is the digital citizenship, uh, digital citizenship presentation. So when I'm ready to do that, I'll click, I'll come into anthology again. I'll click inside of digital citizenship. And I will upload my PowerPoint in here and then send it to me to grade it. Likewise, you can also see how you did. If you go to menu, you go to work, and I think it's my results. Um, the directions are inside of Brightspace. And remember, I'm a professor, so I don't have some of the access that students do. So if you want to see results, you can go to my results and see how you did on all of your assessments. Uh, but the nice thing is, is once um, when you send work to me, I get an email and I can go and log in and do grading. When I'm done grading something, you get an email back. So it's it's a nice like little email gateway that tells you that work's been graded. You can go look at it if you'd like. And that's that's uh, anthology portfolio. So again, the best thing I can tell you to do is just look at the syllabus and track what is due and where. I sometimes get students that really get kind of mixed up because they may just glance over the syllabus. They forget to refer back to it. And they're like, where the heck do I turn this in at? <laughs> and uh, that's why I made sure to kind of outline it in the syllabus where things get turned in at. Can I just ask you where, where we're going to copy and paste like the person we read and our response to that? Is that all then got to be copied kind of and pasted or is there is there an icon there where we're just going to be able to copy the whole thing um, to put it into the anthology? So there's a template. So if you go to um, let me go to. But like, will you have to copy and paste that template or is there an. actual? Yes. Like, yeah, okay. What you would do is here, I'll just download it real quick and I can show you. OK. So here's my document right here. I'm just going to okay. go to. Uh, the discussion forum. And uh, what I would do is I'm going to start off by, let's say, for instance, I'm, no, went to the wrong way. Sorry, I'm trying to rush through this. I need to slow down. Okay. So I'm going to go into my uh, online discussion right here. Mm -hmm. um, let's say I'm Shelby. I'm just going to pretend I'm Shelby. I'm going to go in here. Here is her original post. What I'm going to do is if I'm Shelby, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it into the first text box here because right. it's reply okay. the direct reply to the thread. Right. So mm -hmm. Now for here, what I'm going to do is it says, I read the following thread posted by student one. So you're going to have to pick two of your colleagues to uh, post to. So let's say for instance, okay, so I'm Shelby and I'm going to finish this um, back to topic. Uh, let's say, okay, let's say for instance, Let's pretend Shelby responded to Alice right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy Alice's stuff right here. I Yeah, I probably don't need all the standards no. there. So. Yeah, you don't. Uh, no biggie. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just uh, come over here, and I would paste here underneath. Mm-hmm. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the reply down here. So let's say Shelby was nice enough to reply to Alice below. Let's say this is, let's pretend this is Shelby right here. What I would do is Shelby would paste 
Okay, below here. Just like that. And then, okay. and then uh, for the second one, you're just, so you are copying and pasting somebody else's thread, but it's just so that I have the context of understanding what you replied to. That's okay. Okay, and then I'm going to copy and paste all of this, or is there a spot where this will just be, um, am I going to save this as a document then yeah. to put on? You'll save it as a document. So I'm going to, I'll go to file, save as. Right, okay. And go yep. desktop. And that's where I'd put my name and discuss and, and then the name and the right. You got it. And then what I would do is then I would go into anthology here. I would click on online discussion. I would mm -hmm. upload it to here. So I would take that document in here and put it in there. Okay. And then I would hit the submit button and then send it to me. Okay. Okay. It, yep. It's uh it's kind of like a lot of steps. It's okay. the only time you have have to do that for this one. Everything else is pretty much I do a document. I upload it to Anthology, I send it to me. So okay. there was kind of like an extra step added in here. All right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop, um, I'm just gonna stop recording, but I will continue to answer any questions for a few minutes. So let me just stop recording. Let's see.